First of all, I would like to uh, thank the organizers for uh, giving me this opportunity to present today. So I'm going to tell you a story about uh, how minimal sensing of viral RNA delays uh, innate and adaptive immunity after vaginal viral transmission. So this study utilized uh, a model viral pathogen, LCMV, but uh, we think that the results uh, could be uh, very much related to other uh, uh, vaginally transmitted RNA viruses such as uh, HIV, Ebola, or Zika. So most pathogens enter our bodies via mucosal routes, and these mucosal barriers have to, uh, mal uh, balance, uh, have to balance tolerance against uh, benign antigens such as commensals, and have to also induce immunity to pathogens. So one of the major goal of our lab is to understand uh, how female reproductive tract maintains this balance. So similar to other uh, mucosal routes, female reproductive tract has to induce tolerance against uh, commensals. And in addition to that, this uh, female reproductive tract, or FRT, has to also induce tolerance against uh, semen antigens uh, for the purpose of reproductive biology. So under steady state conditions, the dendritic cells uh, pick up luminal antigens and uh, they bring these antigens to the draining iliac lymph node where they induce immunity in other immune cells. So this, uh, sorry, uh, induce tolerance uh, in immune cells. And this tolerance is actually very important for the host to avoid unnecessary immunity. So now what we are, understand, uh, what we are uh, interested to understand is what happens if there is a pathogenic virus in this tolerogenic environment. So does the tolerance in the female reproductive tract affect protective immunity to harmful pathogens? So to understand that, we are utilizing a lymphocytic choreomeningitis virus uh, uh, as a model pathogen. And uh, LCMV, or lymphocytic choreomeningitis virus, or LC LCMV, is an enveloped single-stranded RNA virus. So other uh, single-stranded RNA, other RNA viruses that could be uh, vaginally transmitted are uh, HIV, Ebola, and Zika, as I mentioned. But unfortunately, none of, uh, those, these, none of these viruses can uh, naturally infect mice. So uh, whereas mouse is the natural uh, host for LCMV. And uh, the natural route of transmission of LCMB is vertical from uh, mother to child, and mice can be also mucosally transmitted. Uh, this virus, uh, because this virus infects epithelium, monocytes, and lymphocytes, uh, we hypothesized that LCMB uh, uh, may infect the vaginal tissue. Importantly, the protective immunity that is generated uh, during systemic infection using LCMB is mediated by CD8 T cells. So we thought if we can use LCMV as a model viral pathogen to study uh, vaginal viral transmission uh, of RNA viruses, so we could also probably study the CD8 T cell response in this system. So the first thing that we wanted to know, can LCMV be, be vaginally transmitted? So to do that, we uh, progesterone synchronized uh, female wild type mice and uh, infected uh, the mice with uh, the acute strain of LCMV uh, via, uh, via either uh, intraperitoneal or uh, intravaginal routes. So the intraperitoneal route we used as a positive control uh, because others have shown that uh, CD8 T cell uh, immunity is generated after intraperitoneal infection in the female reproductive tract. So just to give you a, a brief uh, overview of the anatomy of mouse female reproductive tract, the vaginal tissue and the transformation zone together is called lower FRT. Uh, and the ovary and uterus is called upper FRT. So during vaginal infection, we just put the uh, uh, virus uh, into the vaginal cavity without causing any abrasion or damage. And after uh, two days of uh, infection, we can detect uh, the virus uh, uh, shown in green here in the epithelial layer. Two days later, at day four post-infection, we can see that the virus has crossed the epithelial layer, layer and it's uh, replicating in the uh, submucosa. So yes, LCMV does infect the vaginal tissue. So then we wanted to know when and where is uh, LCMV uh, being sensed after vaginal infection. So. Sensing of pathogens uh, by the host is what uh, we know that initiates crosstalk between innate and adaptive immunity. So for LCMV, uh, the uh, pathogen-associated molecular pattern is RNA, and 
uh, which is uh, uh, detected by TLR7, RIGAI, and MDF5, uh, leading to the uh, induction of uh, IRF7 and NF kappa B signaling, which then uh, induces interferon beta production, and then interferon beta uh, induces a group of interferon stimulated genes in infected and also in neighboring cells, uh, which creates an overall antiviral state. Interferon beta can also uh, enhance antigen presentation and effector T cell responses. So what we did uh, is uh, we uh, then uh, tracked down when and where interferon beta is being induced after vaginal LCMV uh, transmission. So this is, IP, uh, this is data shown from IP-infected animals. So after IP infection, we can see that the high level of viral load in uh, lower FRT, iliac lymph node, and spleen. And the first place where uh, we see high level of interferon uh, beta being induced is in the spleen uh, at as early as at day one post-infection. So compared to spleen, in the ILN, the interferon beta induction is a day delayed. But surprisingly, we didn't really see a significant induction of interferon beta in lower FRT tissue, although there is a very high viral load present in this tissue. So in IVAG infection, we see the virus uh, replicates exponentially in lower FRT and iliac lymph node, but the virus doesn't really go to the spleen. And since we don't see the virus in the spleen, uh, we also don't see induction of uh, interferon in IVAG infected animals in the spleen. So compared to spleen, ILN has a similar uh, level of both viral, uh, viral kinetics and also interferon induction in uh, both IP and I IVAG infected animals. Uh, and once again, we don't see interferon beta being induced in the lower FRT tissue, although there is a ton of virus being replicating here. So this was quite striking to us, the lack of interferon pro production in the lower FRT tissue. So we wanted to know, uh, are the RNA sensors expressed or induced in the lower FRT tissue? So we looked at the uh, uh, relative level of expression uh, of uh, MDF5, Rig I, and uh, TLR7 in lower FRT, upper FRT, iliac lymph node, and spleen. So compared to these other tissues, the lower FRT has uh, actually the lowest level of these sensors, followed uh, by upper FRT. And between iliac lymph node and spleen, uh, they have similar levels of these uh, sensors, uh, with TLR7 uh, being expressed at, at much higher level uh, uh, compared to the lower FRT. So, okay, these sensors are expressed at very low concentration, low level, but are they induced after infection? So what we see is that after IP, uh, these sensors are getting in induced only after IP infection and uh, not after IVAG infection. And uh, correlating to that, uh, sensor, this type of sensor expression pattern, we also see a uh, higher level of IRF7 induction only after IP infection, IP infection but not in IVAG infection. So we, uh, we think that this, uh, this uh, induction of sensors in IP infection is uh, because, because of a uh, high level of systemic interferon induced only after IP infection. So does this, uh, uh, how does uh, this minimal viral recognition in FRT affect viral clearance? So we saw that uh, after IP infection, uh, the viral control begins uh, at uh, around day four post-infection, and it takes about two weeks for the virus to get cleared. And in IVAG infection, we see a robust uh, increase in viral, uh, uh, robust replication of the virus uh, up until uh, day five. And we don't really see the viral control uh, initiating and up until day seven. But the virus uh, does uh, really uh, get cleared by day 12. And we see a uh, two log fold difference in viral load uh, in the IV I IVAG infected uh, versus IP infected mice. And this clearance in IVAG infected mice is actually dependent on CD8 T cells, because if we infect the CD8 T cells, they cannot clear the virus. Whereas if we infect mice that lack CD4 T cells, they, can, they have no uh, trouble controlling the virus. So knowing this critical requirement of CD8 T cells, we then uh, thought is, is the delay in viral clearance after vaginal infection due to a delay in activity of CD8 T cells? So to know that, we uh, transferred uh, P14 cells, which are LCMV specific uh, TCR transgenic CD8 T cells into wild type mice and similarly infected uh, these chimeric mice with either IP or IV, IVAG route of uh, infection. And 
what we see is that in after IP infection, <coughs> the P14 show up in the lower FRT tissue uh, at day five post infection, uh, which is when we also see uh, the viral control uh, uh, begins. And <coughs> We uh, don't really see any difference between IVAG and uninfected animals in terms of T cell, uh, uh, T cell uh, recruitment. Uh, in uh, IVAG infected animals, uh, at day seven, finally the T cells show up, and uh, which is when uh, uh, we again see the initiation of viral control. So we see about two days delay in uh, the two days delay in, uh, of when the CD8 T cells show up in IVAG infected animals. So is this delay because of uh, the CD8 T cell priming? So to uh, know that, we uh, CFAC labeled uh, the P14 cells and transferred them into wild type mice and similarly infected the mice. And we uh, detected the CFAC dilution as a me measure of activation and proliferation. And we could detect a one day delay in uh, uh, IVAG infected animals in, in terms of CFAC uh, proliferation of P14s. Uh, activated T cells uh, leave the lymph nodes and they, uh, then they enter the circulation uh, before they can enter the uh, peripheral uh, tissues. So we could detect about two days delay uh, of uh, CD8 T cell proliferation uh, uh, in the uh, uh, two days delay, delay of when the proliferated T cells show up in the spleen. And this two day delay actually correlated with uh, when the CD8 T cells show up in the lower FRT tissue. We then wanted to know uh, whether, uh, uh, we, we then wanted to uh, focus more in the iliac lymph node and wanted to know the requirements of CD8 T cell priming. And we know that CD8 T cell priming is dependent, dependent on antigen dose, local inflammation, and uh, DC maturation. Uh, we don't really see a uh, difference in IP and IVAG infected animals in terms of antigen dose, local inflammation. But, so we uh, focus more on DC maturation. And all we know is that immature disease in, uh, induce tolerance and mature disease induce stimulation. And the DC maturation we can determine by determining uh, the uh, surface level of expression of uh, a range of activation markers such as CD86, MHC class two, or CD25. So if we look at CD86 expression, there is not much difference between IP and IVAG animals. But we do see uh, a significant difference between IP and IVAG animals, and uh, the expression levels of both CD MSC2 and CD25 are much lower in IVAG infected animals. So this indicated that the disease in IVAG infected animals are uh, probably semi-mature. So does this DC maturation then correlate with the kinetics of CD8 T cell priming? Uh, uh, yes, so we actually see a delay in the DC maturation in IVAG infected animals compared to IP infected animals. If we correlate this uh, with the CD8 T cell priming, we see that at day two, uh, the low level of uh, DC maturation uh, correlates with lack of CD8 T cell priming in both IP and IVAG infected animals. Uh, at day three post-infection, the disease have matured in uh, IP infected animals when they, uh, we also see the proliferation of CD8 T cell uh, in IP infected animals. In IVAG infected animals, the uh, migratory disease uh, eventually become matured at day four, which is when we also start to see proliferation of CD8 T cells. So to summarize what I have just told you, we don't see uh, interferon beta being induced after uh, IVAG infection in the lower FRT tissue. And uh, this is probably because of uh, lack of uh, uh, enough uh, RNA sensors expressed in this tissue. And as a result, the immature disease take up the antigen and bring them to the draining iliac lymph node. When a uh, live virus reaches the draining iliac lymph node, this then uh, induces the uh, uh, production of inflammatory cytokines. And these inflammatory cytokines then, he then helps this immature disease to get mature and uh, prime uh, uh, naive CD4, CD8 T cells. So this extra step of uh, the DC maturation in the IVAG infected animals is uh, probably causing the delay in CD8 T cell response. However, uh, the primed and proliferated CD8 T cells in IVAG infected animals can uh, control the virus in the iliac lymph node, and uh, they can also control uh, the virus uh, from going to the systemic circulation. Uh, these activated CD8 T cells then uh, migrate through the circulation to the site of infection in the FRT tissue, where they can also clear the virus in the FRT tissue. So, 
considering that uh, the uh, uh, TLR, uh, uh, TLR uh, sensors are uh, conserved uh, in the, uh, different species of mammals, and uh, there, is, there are also a couple of reports that uh, there is very low level of TLRs expressed, uh, uh, especially the RNA, RNA uh, recognizing TLRs are expressed at low levels in human female reproductive tract. So uh, we think that these findings could be relevant to sexually transmitted uh, other human uh, RNA viruses such as Zika, Ebola, or HIV. So I'd like to thank uh, uh, the people who have directly or indirectly collaborated uh, with me uh, in this project, especially uh, uh, my PI, Shomise Sanjabi, who has guided me throughout this whole project. And also I'd like to thank my lab mates, especially Eric Woodruff and uh, Martin Trepkar. Martin is a postdoc in the lab. He is uh, working on developing a rectal uh, uh, infection model. So if you are interested to know the uh, similarities between the rectal and IVAG infection model and also the very interesting difference, the differences between these two systems, please feel free uh, to visit his poster. Thank you very much. What's the benefit for the host in downregulating um, or having low expression of these sensors at a site where you have such common um, infection? So the question is, uh, what's, what are the factors that are? No, it, more why. Why do you think, do you have a model for why you think the? So we think it's, uh, it's very much uh, uh, re relevant to the biology of the tissue. So this uh, tissue, uh, if we just consider uh, about the semen, semen has a lot of exosomes which contain a lot of RNA. And if this tissue has a lot of RNA sensors, that will then induce unwanted uh, immunopathology. And also this is an open environment, so probably the host is trying to minimize unnecessary immune activation. Hi, thank you. Um, nice talk. Um, two quick questions. Um, first, um, it's been shown that certain myeloid dendritic cell subsets within the spleen in mice actually express different uh, levels of Regi and MDA5, for example. So have you looked to see at the subset um, composition within the female reproductive tract? Uh, that's an excellent point, actually. That's in our uh, to-do list. We haven't done that yet. So yeah, I agree totally. That's it. it could be related to the subsets of cell populations that are present in the particular tissues. Right. And second quick question is, if you actually alter the dose of virus that you give, can you change and alter the kinetics of CD T cell activation? We actually tried that. Uh, we didn't see the CD T cell response being enhanced with uh, four times higher dose of the virus. So we couldn't go much higher because the volume we can put into the vaginal cavity is very limited. So four times higher we tried. It didn't affect. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Uh, <laughs>